good story about engineers and a train. Can you tell us? High in the mountains, engineers were building a bridge across a deep valley between two mountains. Now, down below, the people of the village watched the men working with a lot of interest. I would love that. I want to be an engineer. One day, the bridge was finished, but it looked very thin and weak. Way up there, the people of the village said, we will never ride on any train that goes across that bridge. Well, then what happened? Well, the engineers heard that people didn't trust their bridge, yet they knew the bridge was so strong and would never break. What can they do? It's hard to convince people who fear. The engineers decided we must test this bridge, not for ourselves, but for the village people. So they sent a message that there would be a test at a certain day. I know everyone from the village below came to watch. Their eyes must have been peeled open. As they stood there, here comes a huge engine train down the track and onto the bridge. Then another engine train followed, and another one. Each one was so heavy. And they stopped on the bridge? All three of them? Yes. When they were all strung out on the bridge, they stopped. Did the bridge crash? No, it stood the test, and now the villagers believed. That was a good test. Yeah. The engineers knew it would hold. Yeah, sure. The bridge did not become strong because it was tested. It was actually strong all the time. That's like our God. He is strong. He doesn't need to be tested. But people like us can become strong through testing. Sure. I like the village people. I think that is what we are going to see in our story about Jesus today. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, can I ask a question? Ask. What do we call drivers for trains? Trainers. <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. My name is Teacher Sheila, and we'll continue, uh, we're continuing on the lessons on uh, the life of Christ. And today we're going to talk about Jesus being in the wilderness. And it's found in the book of Matthew, chapter 4. But before I talk about Jesus being in the wilderness, I want to talk about his cousin, who was a preacher. His name was John. We normally know him as John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. He, he had been sent by God to prepare the way for Jesus so that when Jesus came, people would have known about Jesus. He asked people to repent their sins by saying, God, I'm sorry. And after that, he would baptize them and they would become, they would join the family of Christ. So one day, Jesus also came to John the Baptist and uh, he needed John the Baptist to baptize him. And so uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, not because he was a sinner, but it was to show people and also us that he was ready for his ministry to begin. So when, uh, when John the Baptist uh, had Jesus inside the water and he was out, the heaven opened and a dove came down. In, uh, it was the Holy Spirit in form of a dove came down and landed upon Jesus. And uh, even before people were amazed because of that, uh, a loud voice was heard from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And that was the voice of God. In that moment, we could see the entire Trinity. The Trinity is God the Father, that was the loud voice. And then God the Son, that was Jesus, he was there. And then there's the God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who came down like a dove and uh, he, was, uh, he landed on Jesus. And now once Je that happened, uh, Jesus was now ready to begin his ministry. And the devil didn't want Jesus to do his ministry. Jesus, the devil didn't want Jesus to die on the cross. Because if he died on the cross, our sins would not be forgiven. Because the reason why Jesus died on the cross is because our sins needed to be forgiven by Jesus dying on the cross. So uh, after he was baptized, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. The wilderness was a lonely and very deserted place. The Holy Spirit uh, led Jesus to go there, and he went there. He stayed there for 40 days, and he did not eat anything. He didn't carry any food. He was just staying there day one, day two, until day 40, without any food 
to eat or anything. So can you imagine staying 40 days without eating anything? So Jesus stayed for 40 days. And now when he was very hungry and he was very tired and very weak, the devil now came and wanted to tempt Jesus because he did not want Jesus to die on the cross. And now when he came to Jesus, he came to Jesus and he was very confident and he told Jesus, uh, uh, and in, uh, I'll read it from uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse, uh, verse 3, and it says, The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to come, become bread. And when he, if it was me or you, it would be, ah, I'm very hungry, I need food. And you would want to be drawn and change those things. But Jesus did not come to do his will. He only came to do the will of God. So Jesus did not, did not want to disappoint God by doing things to please him. Because everything Jesus did was so that people would come to God and not for his own comfort. So well, let's see what Jesus said. If uh, so in verse 4, Jesus answered, it is written. He used the word of God to reply to the devil. And he said, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And now, the devil was very irritated. He didn't expect Jesus would refuse. And now, he, did, he, did, he, did he give up? No, he did not. He came again the second time. He took Jesus on the highest point in Jerusalem, on the highest point of the temple. And he told Jesus, Jesus, let's see what he told Jesus. So in uh, verse 5, uh, he told Jesus, uh, throw yourself down. Can you imagine being in a high place and you're being told to throw yourself down? And now he told him, he, uh, the devil told Jesus, throw yourself down. Huh? And he continued, uh, for it is written. He also used the same, same word, the, the Bible that Jesus was using. The devil now said, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And now, uh, Jesus looked at the devil, and he didn't even, uh, he didn't, because him falling from the top of the cliff, yes, the, yet the angels would have helped him. But now Jesus did not want to do things on his own. He would only do something that God has commanded him to do. And now he looked at the devil and also gave him a response again. In, uh, in verse 7, he also used the word. Jesus kept on saying, now, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And now when the devil had that again, he was now, ah, this man, he keeps on using the word of God. Okay, let me now do something else. He didn't give up. He now took Jesus uh, and showed him around. He took him to a high point and showed him everything and showed him the glory. Maybe he showed him many cars, he showed him uh, many houses and told Jesus, if you would only bow down and worship me, all these things will become yours. But now Jesus remembered that even the devil is telling him he'll give him all those things, and yet they don't even belong to they don't even belong to the devil because God is the one who created the world and He created everything in it. So uh, Jesus looked at the devil and he also used the word of God again, and he told the devil. Uh, he told the devil in verse in verse ten, "Worship the Lord your God and serve Him only." And now the devil looked at Jesus for maybe a moment, maybe that day, and he decided, I'll give up. No, I'll not. He just left Jesus, and he went. And now Jesus was there. He had defeated the devil. And now he, uh, the, the, uh, the angels of God were sent to Jesus. When he was very hungry at that time, he was very tired. Huh? He has been tempted by the devil, but we thank God that he de defeated the devil. And now the, uh, the angel was sent to him, to minister to him, to take care of him. And maybe even they brought even maybe food for him or something to just prepare his body so that when he goes out now to preach to the people, he would have the energy, he would have the psych, and he would talk to people about Jesus and maybe heal the sick and uh, draw many to the kingdom of God. And that's our lesson for today, boys and girls. Uh, and as we conclude, we have seen that Jesus defeated the devil. He defeated the devil and 
me and you also can defeat the devil each and every day. And one thing we need to do in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, it talks about having the armor of God, putting on the armor of God. And when you hear the armor of God, it means, as you read on, it means to put on Jesus. So when you put on Jesus, he will protect you from the devil. The devil will try to harm you, but when you have Jesus, uh, he will not harm you. And putting on Jesus means uh, you believe in Jesus. You believe uh, that he died on the cross because of your sins, and now you're a free person. And now when we continue uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, we see something else about trusting God. Jesus was able to defeat the devil because he trusted God. He believed in God. He believed that God will help him through the entire process. And now when we believe in God, that is called the shield of faith. It is more like a shield. A shield is something that you always use. Uh, have you ever seen a soldier, uh, not a soldier, a warrior? He carries a shield and he always have maybe a spear or something else. The shield is to protect himself from the arrows. So whenever uh, Jesus, uh, in the Bible, it tells us to have the shield of faith. And now the shield of faith is something to protect yourself from the devil. Because the devil will throw many arrows. He will throw many, many small, small things and traps to you. But when you have faith in God and you believe that God loves you and he will always be with you, you are able to defeat the devil. And apart from uh, putting on the armor of God, that is putting, uh, having Jesus, and also believing in God, that is the shield of faith, you also need to have the sword of the spirit and by saying the sword of the spirit I only mean using the word of God do you remember in the story Jesus kept on using the word he kept on telling the devil it is written because Jesus knew the word that means you and me should always read the word in order to know what we should use against the, the devil because the word of God is referred to as this the sword of the spirit you remember our warrior our warrior has a shield he protects himself and he also have a, uh, he has a sword and the sword he uses it to attack. So when you have the word of God and you use the word of God, it will always help you to protect yourself from the devil. And when you read the word of God, you get to know things about yourself and things about uh, that you, so that the devil will not come to uh, and lie to you because the devil is a liar. But now it is always good to for, uh, at the beginning we said you put on the armor of God and the armor of God is say, we said having Jesus and now the second thing is trusting God when you trust in God it means you have the shield of faith and now when after having the shield of faith the third thing is having the word of God and having the word of God it is referred to as the sword because the Bible talks about the word of God is like a double-edged sword it is used to defeats the devil. So since the, uh, Jesus was able to defeat the devil, there are moments maybe uh, we as Christians are not, or as children of God, we're not able to defeat the devil. But now when you fall into sin, and you fall, uh, when you fall into sin, it doesn't mean now you run away from God. In the Bible, we read in 1 John chapter 1 verse 9, it says, um, if you confess our sins, he is he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Now, what it talks about to confess, it talks about confessing to God. Now, confessing is now when you do something wrong, you run quickly and tell God, God, I have done this and this and this, and God, I need you to forgive me. And when you do that, the Bible has told us, and the Bible does not lie, that God will do what? God will forgive us our sins. And now, and that is the most beautiful thing in becoming, in being in the family of God. You, and it doesn't mean you always go and sin. Huh? It doesn't mean you always now follow what the devil tells you. You try and defeat the devil uh, through the help of God and so that you will not end up making God sad and always making God uh, have a sad face in heaven. You should always put a smile on God by always doing what God wants and doing what uh, the will of God. Uh, and now we've see, uh, I've learned about Jesus, we've seen how he defeated the devil, and now you cannot defeat the devil unless you accept Jesus in your heart, unless you become, you join the family of Christ. And for you to do that, you need to confess your sins and tell Jesus, I'm sorry, and I believe in Jesus. Because Jesus died on the cross so that me and you would join his family. All our sins were washed away so that we would join and follow Jesus. So if you, if you have never 
told, told Jesus to come into your heart, I would like you to make a prayer with me and say, Dear God, I thank you for your son Jesus. I thank you that he died on the cross because of my sins and I believe in my heart that he rose again. And today I take him as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And Father God, I want to thank you for this moment. I want to thank you for the lesson. I want to thank you for the kids. May you continually be with them. May you continue, uh, continually protect them and let your angels always guard them and uh, keep them away from the arrows and the snares of the devil, oh my God. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for he, love, uh, he loves us and he's always there with us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When we start